Another video, still got the fire going. This time we're gonna look at pulling rods and pistons out of this LS and what I do. You guys do what you want, you're going to anyway. <clears throat> so I got the whole pan of junk off, lifters are out, heads are off obviously. Um, if you read the manual, it says not to use the impact when you pull the heads, I pull the heads anyway. It says not to reuse the torque to yield bolts, um, I do. And then I torque those dudes to 85 pounds with just 30 weight oil. Um, I tried the Chinese studs, they're crap. They just stretch and stretch and stretch. So most of y'all probably already knew that. This has reused torque to yield bolts on it. And she put out almost 800 horsepower on 16 pounds. Um, I don't know what she's making now. I've hit 20, 27 pounds a few times on it. Need to put it back on the dyno again. So anyway, keep everything in order, unless you just want to not, that's fine too. So flip this dude over and your cylinders, this is for you, nephew. Let's start with it in the upright position, if I can do this without crushing myself. Oh, that'll make you nauseous, huh? So looking at it on a... Uh, Small block Chevrolets, new and old, small Mopars, big Mopars, big Chevys. Don't get me started on the Ford stuff. That's just an abomination. They like mid-year changes, swapping cylinder numbers in the middle of a year, swapping firing orders. It's just, it's retarded. The firing order on these is different from a, say a small block Chevrolet or big block Chevrolet or even Mopars. Mopars and Chevys are the same. 18436572 is your firing order. I honestly don't know what it is on the LS. It's all on the computer. I don't worry about it. Um, anyway, back to pulling pistons and stuff. So, your driver's side pistons, one, three, five, seven. Passengers, two, four, six, eight. Um, now, when you flip this dude over, something to think about if you're just getting started messing with stuff like this. Now your pistons are reversed because you flipped it. So two, four, six, and eight are gonna be on that side now. Just something to keep in mind. Um, pulling the pistons and rods is easy. I've already done it. Let's break these loose with a breaker bar. It's an 11 millimeter socket. Um, these are cracked rods. So they're only gonna go in one way. Otherwise, it's like a puzzle piece. It won't fit. Oh, wow. Um, what else we got? Uh, the generally on these, the dot on the piston goes to the front of the engine. What I like to do is label these. I label, hit them with brake cleaner first, wipe them off, and then the side that faces out. When you've got that particular crank throw at bottom dead center for both pistons. That's when you want to loosen these so you can push the piston out. Um, I'll label it with a Sharpie. This would be cylinder four, so four and four. This one would be three, three and three. And then I'll throw them on my bench in the same position they are that the engine's facing on the stand, but right side up. So this is one, two, three, five, seven, etc., and so forth. Uh, let's look at that piston that came out of the Titanic cylinder. See, because on this one, you know, our rings are loose. They rotate. Not bad at all. I'll clean it up. I'll throw in some pine so I'll show you that real quick. These aren't skirted like the, the L33 pistons, like in this one, were um, not skirted. They're not coated with anti-friction coating. Um... Those pistons are pretty nasty. I had to soak them in pine salt for about a week to get the floating pins to actually float and to get the uh, rings loosened up enough to get the gunk out of them. Thing is, when you do that, it is going to take the coating off of the piston skirts. But she doesn't care. She still runs like a skull today. Uh, these rods, because these are Gen 3 rods, this don't seem as beefy as what I recall the L34, uh, L33 rods being in that one. 
that's kind of a hybrid. It's got some Gen 3 stuff on it, some Gen 4 stuff. That rotating assembly is more like a Gen 4. That's stronger. So I can see why these would only be rated to 650 horse, is what the popular saying is. Uh, these are pressed pin, not full floating. And a full floating pin, obviously you'd have your C-clips in there, like the L33 head. So back to this Titanic cylinder. Look at that crap. Just gumped. There's your ring gap. Completely compressed. Oh, it popped out. I'm really surprised. I figured it'd be seized in there. Uh, uh, nope. These are cleaner than the L33 pistons were. A lot. These won't take nearly as long to clean up. But I'll de-gunk de them, get the rings to move in on the piston. And we'll throw them back in the cylinder. There we go. All righties. That's where we're at. I will finish pulling these and then I'll probably do another video on that Titanic cylinder and show you what I did with it. The pitting and stuff was pretty bad, but I'm going to try to run it anyway and just see what it does. It's all a learning experiment. <laughs>